according to St. Matthew, the, uh, chapter uh, 6. And today we continue from, from that chapter. We call it the Sunday of Treasures. And the, the two important messages is actually one message as, as a whole. Um, as we begin to start, um, there's actually three, and some people consider four components of those two passages. Um, fasting. Actually, it starts with prayer, and then the Lord gives his prayer to us, the Lord's prayer followed by um, fasting, and then today the focus is uh, more on uh, giving. <clears throat> so that's what we'll talk about, God willing, um, this week. Because the Lord says here, uh, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. <clears throat> um, Fasting is not about what we consume, um, but more about what consumes us. It's not about what we eat, but what is eating away at our minds and our hearts. <clears throat> and so that's why the church is putting before us today the focus of, of where our minds and our eyes and our hearts should be. And, and that's why actually um, the Lord here, some people get confused why the Lord later on says, the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. <clears throat> and so the fathers, um, more specifically St. Augustine says, the eye here is, means what your intention is. Um, and, and the whole body here refers to our works. And so um, the church is trying to direct our attention to what's inside um, and if we fix whatever is inside by the grace of God, then the outside will be good. And sometimes we need to fix the outside first with the purpose of, of that correcting the inside, but it doesn't always work that way. Um, that's why the Lord is telling us what to do outwardly, but then he's directing our attention inwardly. Um, <clears throat> because um, some people actually decide not to do good for the wrong reasons. And other people do good for the wrong reasons, right? And um, for example, if someone who says that I'm going to withhold forgiveness from my brother or sister because I have decided that this person is not worthy or this person has not repented yet, so why should I forgive them? Um, or another person who refuses to help someone in need because um, I don't want to be taken advantage of. Um, <clears throat> Or we feel maybe I'm going to be deceived. I don't want to be deceived. Right? St. Augustine actually answers this. Of course, we have to give with wisdom and discernment. But St. Augustine answers this when he says, um, When I give money to a beggar who asks me for it, I know neither what he will do with it nor what the result will be for him. Um, it may happen that he puts the money to a poor use or brings something bad upon himself with it, something I neither wanted nor intended when I gave it to him. So then if I acted with good intent, this is the important part, if I acted with good intent and with awareness of, of my good intent for this action, it is called light. And so um, this is what, the, actually there's a story, another story in the Paradise of the Fathers of, of a monk who, um, who gave his yadabeya or his, his robe to a poor man. Right? And then he went as the custom was, um, they, they would make work, right, with, usually palm weaving, and go to the market, sell it, and get food. And whatever they had less, left, they would give to the poor. <clears throat> so when he went to the market, he saw a, a sinful woman um, wearing the robe. And he got very disappointed and depressed and upset. Um, and then an angel appeared to him and said, don't be upset. From the very moment that you offered your robe um, to the poor man, Christ put on the robe, just like he says in Matthew 25, right? <clears throat> um, he said, and then he said, you are not responsible for what happened after that. Um, uh, and so God still accepts our offerings um, because he knows that our knowledge and, and discernment and wisdom is limited. Of course, if we know that if we're going to give something to someone and that's going to hurt them, we don't give it to them, obviously. Um, but we can change what we give. Like, for example, if I know if I'm giving money to someone and they're going to misuse the money, then I give them something that they need, like food or whatever instead. 
Okay, so that's the wisdom, but I still give. Um, so God will see and bless with the intention that's in the heart. And that's the more important thing. It's not what we give outwardly, but where our heart is, how generous we are inside, because we want uh, us to be reformed into the image and likeness of God that we were created. And so if we're not being generous, then we're not being like God. Um, <clears throat> and so um, even sometimes the non-believers are more um, uh, uh, virtuous in, in, in this aspect than, than, than us. Um, for example, in Acts chapter 23, Sorry, Acts chapter 10, Cornelius, Cornelius the centurion um, was an, a non-believer, or he wasn't baptized yet. Um, <clears throat> and But he loved God, and he prayed fervently, and he gave generously, right? Um, and, he was, and, and God actually sent an angel to him saying, your prayers are answered, and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Um, and... Uh, then on top of that, not only did he had confirmation, but he sent the great apostle St. Peter to him to, to learn from him and then to baptize him. Um, so um, we have to make sure that regardless of the outward act, where is the heart? We can give with, with the worst intention of the heart. That won't be accepted by God. And we could give the smallest amount with, with, with the proper and pure and holy intention and that would be very precious in the eyes of God. Um, it's not just about the, the money, but it's about our time and our thoughts. And that's why um, uh, the Lord says you cannot serve God and men. This is the test. Um, <clears throat> how do I know if I'm on the proper path or the dangerous path? Um, you know, like the, the common uh, phrase, you know, what's in your wallet? No, we ask actually more than that, okay? Okay. Um, What's in your calendar? What's in your um, uh, playlist, right? What is in your search history? All of these things are a reflection of what's in your heart. So we have to look at these things and say, well, where is really my heart? I can say my heart is with God. And then I look at all of these things and they have nothing to do with God. Then there's a problem, <clears throat> right? And so that's why the Lord is focusing here on, on what we give and how we give, because more importantly, it's a reflection of what's inside. Um, and that's what the Lord wants to change. <clears throat> And so that's why he's saying, if you, it's kind of like, you know, when you go to um, another country and you, you have to, you can't use the, the money um, that you, you have from here. You have to convert it and exchange it for the money over there, right? So God is saying, when you go to heaven, your money is useless, right? There was a story, I think I told you this before. There was a story of a guy who, who uh, pleaded um, God to, for permission to take gold with him up a suitcase of gold up to heaven and they you know the angel kind of laughed at him he's like fine just take it um and then everyone started laughing he's like why did you bring pavement to, to to heaven like we have this in abundance and it's nothing it's under our feet um so so when the lord says do not lay up your for yourselves treasures on earth but lay yourselves so you need to convert whatever you have here to the treasure in heaven um, so when I give, whether it's my time or my money or my um, comfort or whatever, God transforms that and exchanges that for the heavenly blessings, whether on earth or in heaven or both. Usually it's both. Um, <clears throat> and, and when I'm, and I can see this even in my prayer life. So if my prayer is filled with asking the things from the world, then my heart is, is with the world. Um, but if I ask for the things of heaven more than the things of the world, then God will give me both. That's what the Lord ends in the gospel today. Um, <clears throat> when he says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added to you. Seek, seek the heavenly things and God will give you the heavenly and the earthly things. Heavenly for sure. The worldly things, probably. <laughs> um, if you seek for the worldly things, he probably won't give you either. Um, <clears throat> so, um, uh, why is God asking us to, to, to give and to, and to fast? Because all of these things weigh us down, physically and spiritually. Um, and the lighter we are, they're kind of like, you know, a hot air balloon, right? If there's too much weight, it's not going to go anywhere, uh, no matter how much air you put in there. But you need to lighten the load. 
And this is what we do in the fast. We lighten the load um, with not only what we eat and how much we eat and what types of things we eat, but all of the other things that we're doing that are superfluous in our, in our, in our life. Um, <clears throat> we have to get rid of these extra things. And then we can fly. Then we can raise our minds and our hearts to heaven. So um, <clears throat> uh, it's not the act itself when we're talking about fasting or giving or forgiving um, or, or prayer. It's not the act itself, it's, but it's what it does to, to us or what it does and what God does inside of us when we decide to do these things with the right intentions. Um, <clears throat> so um, because, and I think I've said this before, even um, the outward act, if it's done in the wrong way, it's not acceptable before God. Like, in, for example, in Acts 23, there were a group of people um, uh, that hated St. Paul, and they wanted to kill him. And uh, what did they do? They made an oath that they wouldn't eat or drink until they bound him and, and, and they killed him. <clears throat> of course, it didn't happen. Um, but was this fast acceptable before God? Absolutely not, right? So, yes, we should fast, but we have to make sure, what are we fasting? Am I fasting because... You know, I want a million dollars. That fast is not going to be accepted, right? And and hopefully, you know, even if it is, it's not going to it's not going to be good for you, um, right? Because obviously the heart is in, in the wrong place, and the way you spend it will be in, in the wrong way, right? Um, uh, so, anyways, um, the idea here is, um, whatever I spend my money or my time or my thoughts in, that is where my treasure is. Um, <clears throat> so if I spend all my money on clothing, that's my treasure. If I talk about only sports, that's what I worship or food. If, if I'm consumed with, with all the things of the world, then I'm a worldly person. But if these are things are just used for, um, so, uh, one of the fathers says, well, um, St. Philoxenus of Heropolis, he says, some are slaves of their possessions and some are masters of their wealth. So you want to be a master of your wealth? You want to be a slave of your possession. What is, are, are, is it something that you consume for your betterment or is it something that consumes you for your poverty? And he says one man is enhanced by his possessions and another worships them. Um, so who, what type of person? Like, you can't have both. That's why the Lord said um, what? He says you cannot serve God and man. Right? You, you, you can't serve God and the world. It's either one or the other. Um, and the more we look at our lives with, with an objective uh, perspective, the more we're able to discern, am I going in this direction, I'm going up or down? Um, <clears throat> so um, uh, we have to be greedy to receive God's blessing, and God will grant us the heart of generosity. The more that I give um, the worldly things, the more, will God, the more God will give me the spiritual things. Um, and so, um, and the more I give the things of my own house, uh, the more God will give the things of his house. Um, <clears throat> and so, um, actually a few days ago, I was um, walking into a store and there was like a, a homeless beggar running to me and he opened his hand and he had just a few coins in his hand and I was very embarrassed and I started to say, sorry, I don't have any actually cash on me. Um, <clears throat> And he, he, he closed his fist and he interrupted and said, no, <laughs> you are the priest. And, and he took from, his, he, want, he was opening to give to me. Um, I was so, so embarrassed. <clears throat> um, but um, he took from his change probably everything that has, this was the closest that I experienced the widow of the two mind story. Um, and same thing with Cornelius. He said, um, and, and I felt that that coin that he gave me was worth, you know, tens of thousands from, from, from me or any, of any one of us. Um, <clears throat> so, and the guy wasn't even orthodox, um, um, but he was very generous. And so, um, like the book of Sirach says, do not let your hand be stretched out to receive and closed when it is time to give. Oftentimes we do the opposite. It's closed when it's time to give and it's open when it's time to receive. God, please, please give to me. Um, but then when it time, gives time, it, when it's time for us to give to others or to him, then it's closed. <clears throat> um, we need to be like that man. Um, <clears throat> even when it comes to God, sometimes we say, God, please, please give me this, give me that. Um, 
and we have already received so much and sometimes our prayers need to be transformed um said god i need to offer you something more if you give me more that i can give more to you um uh, you gave the most precious thing to me <clears throat> and so um even if we give everything it's nothing in comparison to what what god constantly has given to us and is giving to us and wants to give to us um <clears throat> And so the main thing he, he want the reason why he wants us to give is so we could be like him, um, and and this is the the purpose and the goal of, of the fasting and the prayer and the giving and the forgiving. <clears throat> um, it's uh, uh, it's interesting to to think of in this way because when we change the perspective of what we're doing in our outward lives then our in, inward lives or the inner heart becomes to, to, to be more aware of why we should be doing one thing versus the other. Um, and so we have to change our perspective um, in, in our life. Um, and that's only done if we, if we kind of put the thing aside, whatever it, it is, and, and take a step back and, and look at God. Now try to see how this thing is is um, perceived in God's eyes, and then we could be um, more wise in in our actions and in our thoughts. And when we come uh, to to uh, spend money or to decide uh, of our what we should do, um, so then our calendars change, right? Our checkbook changes, um, our search history changes, right? And then our heart. This is a reflection of how our, our heart is being transformed. By the grace of God, this is what God wants for us. Um, he doesn't care about any of the worldly things, but He's worried that the worldly things are affecting our hearts. Um, <clears throat> so may the God of all grace grant us the blessing of this fast, so we may take this opportunity to to be transformed by His grace into the image and likeness of God. Glory be to Him now and to the age of ages.